Hey guys, it's Doodle here. I was talking to user Jameson online today on the AutoCAD subreddit, and uh, he works at a steel shop and wanted to know how to make drawings in AutoCAD for simple plates. And it's kind of a bit more than you can easily get into in a text post on Reddit. I don't have that kind of free time there, but uh, I figured, hey, what the heck, let's use that as an excuse to make a kind of tutorial video. It's going to be a very niche tutorial because uh, you don't generally draw these everywhere, but maybe you'll learn something, maybe you won't. Hopefully at least Jameson will. So what are we going to do? We're going to make a plate. What do we want to do? We want to draw, let's say, a 6 by 8 plate. So I'm going to start it over here. And uh, let's draw a 8, 6. I use the rectangle tool, the at symbol, that you will see down on my uh, command line means make these units relative to whatever my last point was. There are lots of other ways you can do this. You can use dynamic input. You can. Uh, it's AutoCAD. It's there's a million and one ways to do everything in AutoCAD. This is the way I often do them. If you find a way that works better, great. Um, so now let's draw the side view. We're gonna say it's a three eighths plate. So at 3 8 x and what did I make this six tall there we go now obviously we don't want these views right next to each other so let's move this over oh say three inches no I really just should have gone four inches by the way if you hit enter or depending on how you have things set up right click again you can repeat the last command again customizable if it doesn't work for you out of the box you can either mess with it and find out how to do that or not so we got to draw some studs on the side of this. So let's do some typical half inch diameter, two inch long studs sound right to you. Now two inch for a stud is typically the full length, I do believe, including the studded part. So I'm going to do 1.75 long, I'll come out another 0.25. By the way, I just move my cursor on and that tells AutoCAD which way to keep going. I'm going to do another 0.25 for the stud portion this way. And it's going to make it a total of one inch at the stud. Come back 0.25, come back up 0.25, and then back this way 1.75. Uh, if I could type that correctly. There we go. Hit enter again to exit out of the command, which is how you exit most commands that have continuous input. And I got to move this in 1.75. So 0.25 that way is on the edge. And then, oh, I meant 1.5, because one and a half. You can have different stud spacings. I'm just going with the one and a half for this one. Uh, these principles should pretty much apply the same way. I just mirrored this across the center of here. And now let's use some construction lines. Again, many ways to do it. This is the way I'm gonna do it. So those are in line with that. Now we need some construction lines that are moved one and a half inches in from these sides. I will mirror, I will Try again, I will mirror this construction line across this middle. And now I will draw the circles for these studs. I'm going to use diameter. You can do the math in your head too, that's fine. Either way, uh, diameter again, one. Let's make these hidden because this is gonna be a front view, which is what I would often find more useful as a cast stone precast guy, although, if you're working in a steel shop, you might want to show it from the other view. So you could make those not hidden, and then you could put this view, either mirror it or put it on the other side. Either way, whatever. Those are principles of drafting that are even more basic than AutoCAD, so that's a bit much to get into right now. All right, I am going to put these on my connections hidden, or connections secondary layer. And the rest of this geometry I'm going to put on the main connections layer. Again, these are appropriate for what I do as a cast stone guy. They might not be appropriate for a steel shop. You should probably try to set up your own layer standards so everything looks right. That's a lot of trial and error. And one final thing to do is I want to make this a section. So I'm going to use a hatch tool that I have preset up to see what's going on. I'm going to type hatch edit. And I'm going to select that hatch. Now you can see all the properties. Uh, normally you can just type hatch or b hatch on the command line and 
have all this stuff come up and set it all yourself. But again, if you're going to use the same ones lots of times, try and set up some tool palettes or some blocks or whatever. But that's what we're doing. We're going to set up some blocks. Uh, I want some dimensions. And hopefully, one inch to the foot is a good scale. Not everybody uses this annotation scaling feature, but I find it's a lifesaver. It lets you automatically scale up dimensions and notes and leaders and all sorts of things that are useful like that. Um, set it up once and then just set your scale as you're going to use it. So let's do the length of the plate here. That and why not give a thickness to? I'm going to line this dimension up with that one by clicking there. Uh, on the command line, you can type O snap to get your object snap settings. You'll notice that I get those little yellow boxes and triangles whenever I'm near existing geometry. And uh, O snap is what tells you which of those AutoCAD should pick up. So I've got endpoint, midpoint, center, uh, quadrant, intersection, insertion. You can also do tangent and nearest and, and a bunch of those. And uh, you can even turn them off completely down here. So now if I go to draw a line, it's not going to pick up anything even though I'm really close to this corner. It doesn't pick it up. Generally, you want to use your object snaps because you don't want just a bunch of lines floating in the middle of nowhere. All right, now I've got that drawing of a plate. And the only thing I'd really need to send this to the shop is a note about these studs so let's do a leader and go over two and down two and let's say four uh, oops, I want to do a diameter symbol in AutoCAD that's percent percent C there's a couple of weird ones like that half inch by two inch long studs and there's our little leader note that describes the studs. I don't know about your shop, but uh, nowhere, nowhere that I have ever seen has actually specified the actual studded portion. It's kind of a whatever's standard to use is what you use, but you can add that information in if you want. That's fine. And so now we have our drawing of the front and section view of a plate. What can we do from there? We could stretch the plate out with the stretch tool. If we wanted to make a 10 inch plate, we could stretch it by two inches. Or we could go ahead and make this whole thing into a block that has a little bit of intelligence built in. So I'm gonna type B make for block make because you know AutoCAD loves its grammar good Yoda style. Uh, what do we wanna call this? Uh, four stud plate and I tried to record this video before and my recording settings were messed up so uh, some of this might have issues with already being defined but it doesn't seem to it says select objects yes I need to select all these objects otherwise I'll make a block out of nothing which uh, add a nothing to nothing carry the nothing and that's worth about nothing for all you firefly, firefly, firefly fans out there pick point I want to pick this as my reference point and I will show you why in just a second. But if I don't define a reference point, it's going to use zero, 00 of the drawing. And that means when I, uh, when I insert the block, it's going to be in a spot that I didn't expect. Block definition has changed. Do you want to redefine it? Yes, redefine it because I have to start this block definition over because my recording screwed up. So now I've got this in here as a block. I'm going to put it on layer 0. Uh, there are a couple layers in AutoCAD that are special. Def points is special in the way of why do they even list it? You shouldn't mess with it. AutoCAD uses it in the background for some of its automatic calculations and keeping track of where dimensions are actually taken to and stuff like that. And if you put things on the def point flare, everything goes to hell. So don't do that. Um, layer zero is a different kind of special in that it's kind of the inherent inherent properties layer. Uh, if you put in XREF, an externally referenced drawing that is put a drawing in a drawing, inceptionize your drawings. Uh, it'll allow everything to show up the way it would have in your normal drawing. Uh, and the same for a block. It'll use all of the properties of the layers that the block was actually drawn with. However, if you define things on layer zero and make it into a block, 
Then when you insert that block, it'll inherit the layer properties where you insert it. So you can go either way on that. I tend to draw everything on the layers that I would normally want, but there are reasons to use both depending on the situation. A little complicated. Mostly just ignore it, except if you're putting blocks in your drawings. I'd probably stick with layer zero for now. All right, select that block and B edit, or just click on the toolbar like I have. Go into the block editor. I've got it set up so that it looks almost exactly like the regular AutoCAD interface, which could be confusing, but don't worry, out of the box, this looks a little bit different than your typical interface. So you'll know you're here. What do I want to do? I want to add some parameters to make some of this automatic. So I'm going to add, if I can click on the right palette again, a linear parameter. Remember, this is the origin of my block. This is what's considered zero to zero for the block. So I'm going to start from there. And then I'm going to go over this way and I'm going to make that distance. I'm going to start uh, over here and go up this way and make this distance. Now I've got two linear parameters. I'm going to call this one length. By the way, this properties palette is awesome. Shows you a lot of things about everything. Click on something, shows you what it has. Click on a couple things, shows you what it has in common and what it doesn't. So nice to have that open. Also nice to have your command line open at all times. You'll see a whole bunch of options pop up whenever you type a command. If you ever want to know how to do things a little bit differently than the default, look at the command line and see what pops up and it might help you out. So I've got this distance here. I'm gonna call this one height because that's what I felt like using. You can call it width. You can call it snargle flob for all, all I care. It'll still work. It just probably won't really help the user all that much. Uh, now I'm gonna select them both and in dynamic blocks, which is what I'm doing here. It's a block that has some uh, parameters added to allow the block to automatically do small changes for you. In the dynamic block, when you're using uh, linear parameters and you're losing, using uh, stretch and uh, uh, move actions, it gets kind of confusing if you need to work from multiple directions at once and which is going what way. If you can get away with just going in one direction, just go in one direction. So what I do is I come over here, number of grips, one. That's all I want. I only want one grip to show up for each. So now you can't move it the other way and make things all confusing. So now I need some actions for these parameters because by themselves they don't do anything. I'm going to associate a stretch action. I'm going to associate it with the length parameter here, this point, meaning this end of it. And what I want to do is tell it the, fr the first corner of stretch frame. Uh, when you do a stretch, you normally do a frame first. So that's how it works in the dynamic block editor too. So here we go. Now we have to tell it which objects because I could select just the outside of it and the dimensions would stay in place and the studs would stay in place, but I don't want that. So I'm going to select all of this stuff as well. There we go. All of that will stretch along with it. Boom. Now we need to do that again, but for the height, I want to grab the correct point here, this point. My little frame is going to go through here. And I want all of those objects again. So there we go. Now, if we close out of the block editor and say yes to the prompt from AutoCAD, if we want to save the changes, which we do, because that would have been pretty pointless otherwise. Oh, and by the way, when you exit the block editor, the zooming just is kind of random. So you might have to, might have to manually get your view back to where it was supposed to be. And if I actually click the zoom window tool, it'll probably work better. You can also uh, scroll on a scroll wheel by default. So now I've got my block here. I select this and look at this. I can automatically make it bigger or smaller just by clicking on those. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Of course, this gives me a plate that is 15 and 3 16 by 14 and an eighth. But if I use the uh, measurement tool for distance here, find out that it's, what is it actually? It's uh one foot three and 11 64th, and that's still probably being rounded. I'm sure your shop is not going to appreciate it if you send out plates that are uh, 1.278931 long by whatever. So let's fix that up real quick. Let's go back into the block editor and see what we can do about it. 
that's the block we want. These two parameters, the value set category, distance type none, as in you can set your distance to whatever you want. We don't care. Well, that doesn't really work so well for a plate. So let's say increment. And uh, I don't know about you, but I think 1 16th of an inch is probably precise enough for anybody, right? Distance minimum. Well, if this plate gets smaller than four by four, the studs are going to be overlapping or going in the wrong direction and off of the plate. So let's let's say four is the minimum. And the maximum, if you need a plate over 10 feet, all righty, have fun with that. So there we go. We added in some basic restrictions to those. Close out of it, save the changes again. And zoom once again, because of course. Now this is our old plate that was already inserted and already messed with it. So it's gonna have some properties that aren't allowed anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase it and. I'm going to insert that block all over again. Four studded plate. Put it over here. Uh, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing, but just for obsessive reasons, I have to put it on layer zero. Anyway, now we've got our plate, and now I can stretch, but it's going to give me even sixteenths. Another thing I can do is you'll notice in the custom category of our properties palette, we have both the length and the height listed, I can just type them in over here. I want a 10 inch long by five and a half high plate and it'll do it for me automatically. And there we go. We have a dynamic block of a 3 8 inch plate. Of course, there's more stuff you can do. You can add in the ability to change the size of the studs or you could even possibly add in uh, ways to make it show different numbers of studs, but that's gonna get a lot more complicated Generally, you probably want to pick some good points that delineate significant differences such as number of studs and just make new blocks for each of them. Otherwise, you're going to open the thing up in the block editor and, and it's just going to be one massive pile of spaghetti that makes no sense and you can't follow. And if you ever need to change anything, good luck. So let's just leave it right as it is and we've got ourselves a fairly usable drawing of a plate. I hope that helped and I'll see you guys next time.